What's up, people? Welcome back. You are on episode two of this mini gas to electric off-road go-kart conversion build that we got going on here. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, I just set up my playlist on my channel. So if you go back to my channel, Chris Uno, and you click on playlist, I've broken up all my builds into like little section things. Say you want to watch episode one of this off-road go-kart in the playlist there's going to be something that says off-road gas to electric go-kart click on it you're going to find the whole build series on this thing but there's only episode one right now because we are on episode two as we speak while you're there anyway you can check out the street go-kart the ebwe which is an electric dirt bike just scroll through them watch the videos enjoy them Subscribe while you're there because you guys subscribing is what's making me continue to make these videos So you're doing good so far. Let's keep them going. The likes help a lot, too So keep those going too. as far as episode two of this build goes. I Want to try to get the front suspension done by this episode and I want to get the half cage built So I want to pretty much have this thing as a rolling chassis by the end of this episode This go-kart had no front suspension I'm doing a cantilever setup just like the rear. Uh, it's gonna be a little different. I'm not too sure if it's actually gonna work. It's very experimental. But we're gonna find this all out at the end of this episode. We're gonna work through a lot of the problems. So let's kind of just get to it. Let's get to the build. And to start this all off, we're gonna remove this seat, which should take two seconds and kind of look like this. So with the seat gone, I'm gonna have to reinforce this because the seat started to crack and that's not good. I don't want the seat to break while I'm riding it. Also, what I wanna do is the seat used to sit like this. I wanna add a little more angle and have it sit something like this, just so it's a little more comfy. It needs to happen because it's super uncomfortable, so. The way we're going to reinforce the seat is by using this flat iron metal. I'm gonna bend it so it gets the shape of the four holes and weld them together just like this and it'll create this metal pan that the seat will actually sit on top of. All right, so now that we got this brace made, it gives us the ability to move it forwards and give it the angle I needed. It also reinforces the bottom and hopefully it will keep it from cracking again. So let's just mount it, get the seat where we want it and start building the cage. All right, so now that we got the seat mounted, we can start the cage. To do this half cage, we're gonna use this 12 ton hydraulic pipe bender that I got at Harbor Freight. And basically we're just gonna take this half inch black pipe and use the pipe bender to bend it pretty cool that's pipe pretty easy and we're just pretty much gonna get all our rough bends going and just start tacking them onto the frame now when I was welding the seat I actually ran out of argon which is the shielding gas for the welder so the welder can't do very good welds right now and it is Saturday and everything is closed so we're just gonna tack it all together. This way I can get most of it made. And we're gonna have to wait till next week to actually weld it nicely. So those are rough tacks. And that's where the shaft's gonna be. Just to get an idea, it's gonna be something like that. And as far as the front goes, we're gonna do a little something like this. Now, let's just ignore the fact that it got really dark really fast because we're not calling quits just yet. Like I said earlier, it is Saturday. We still got all day Sunday tomorrow to finish it, but we are gonna work through the night and do the A-arms in the garage because we're gonna need to use drill press. But as far as the front end goes, I'm gonna have to come to a stop because I want to do like an arch like this, but it needs to be way taller and it's got to be somewhere where the shock's going to mount to. 
So I gotta make these control arms first before we can actually make the rest of the frame. So let's go into the garage. Bam, just like that, we're working with a drill press here. So we're putting the holes at the end of each of these pipes. There's four of them in total. So here are the pieces straight out of the drill press. And what we're gonna do next is put these bushings through the holes. Just like this. Now my Allen key can go in here and the whole thing will pivot, but let's make this permanent. So I'm gonna do a weld and a weld and a weld and a weld. They're gonna be tack welds because I still don't have argon. Basically what's gonna happen next is we're gonna grind one side of these like nuts so they could fit inside this square tubing because like it doesn't hit because that top corner but we're gonna add those in there and then we're gonna add these allen keys to the end this way we could thread something onto here i'll show you what i'm talking about real soon let's just get to it All right, so now that we got all four of these done, it's time to figure out how we're gonna mount these things to the frame. And I'm thinking something like this, with this thing at the end. Get what I'm doing here? Probably not. I don't even know what I'm doing really. But let's make something. So I'm gonna use this flat plate. We're gonna cut it into this cool shape and drill some holes and so check that out. There's one, there's the other. Now what's gonna happen is these can go into here just like that and give us our pivot. But before we do the rest of this, let's redo the spindles because same thing like in episode one how we had the two bars coming off here we're gonna have to redo the whole thing so let's just get to the spindles and basically what we're gonna do is cut all the stuff off that we did in episode one and make fresh back pieces for the two of them this is what we got Just remembered everything is still tacked nothing is really permanent still messing around with it but and that is gonna be Those arms. Put this thing on and cut these arms to fit the length. So let's do it. As I'm chopping these, if you notice, I barely use a tape measure for anything. Pretty much everything I do is kind of winged and uh, not perfect, but it seems to work. Definitely uh, good for proof of concept on experimenting with things. but. Now that we got all four of these cut and shortened, we got these hinge joints with these bolts that I am going to weld the bolt onto the end of these things so the hinge joint can then twist and be adjustable. So let's just get to doing that now. All right, so, ah, they're really hot. Basically what I did here was I welded them to the back. This way these things are permanent and we're just gonna lay it right onto the frame like that. I'm using these just to keep everything straight and even. And let's tack them on.
now that they're nice and welded they're on there pretty good still got to weld them completely here's one control arm now all I did was I took the two and I added the spindle to the end and that's gonna just do one of these things where one will go there and the other goes on just like so now what the two of them is going to do is watch the spindle it always strays stays straight and that's because there's two of them now the problem you run into is this side to side play and you guys are probably like this could have all been avoided if you didn't do Heinz joints up here you wouldn't have this play and it would probably all work but that's not what I have in mind what I actually came up with is I went on eBay and I bought four of these things so two on each side and you remember the little nuts that we welded at the end of these things this is the reason why we take our tie rod and we screw these onto the nuts now hear me out This is gonna control that side to side play. We're gonna do a mounting spot right up here for the two of them. So there'll be two on this side and two on this side. And what that's gonna do for us is give us this motion. The up and down motion. So I just added the tire. You guys can see it one more time with the tire this time. These two are gonna be permanently mounted like that around there somewhere and we got upward travel downward travel up down up down now once I actually permanently mount these like this we won't have that little bit of wobble in every direction also I got to make bushings for the back and that's gonna just keep everything straight too and I would imagine the shocks gonna also help it all stay together but guys I'm exhausted that's it for the weekend we actually got a lot done. The thing looks pretty awesome. I think it's gonna be one of the coolest mini off-road go-karts anybody's ever seen. And what's gonna make it a million times better is the fact that this whole thing is gonna be electric. So stick around, stay tuned, subscribe. We're calling it an end for this week's video. I'm gonna finish welding everything and make it all 100%. I have all the pieces to make this side, so. You guys won't be missing out anything. I'm just gonna put the rest of it together. I'm gonna make this little bracket in the front to hold these, which should be pretty self-explanatory on how to do it. But we'll get right back to it next week with the shock tower mounts, the front hoop, and we're gonna start working on the steering and all the other good stuff that comes along with this thing. So till then, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Enjoy.